There we go. Well, welcome everybody. This is Book Club, Dream Your Life Amazing and the Dream Planner, Chapter 2. If you missed Chapter 1, which um, it's going to happen, people are going to show up in the middle of a book club. They're going to show up in Chapter 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and they're going to realize, what am I going to do? If you'll just go into your back office and submit a ticket or look into your tools, you'll actually see a list of archives of, of the book clubs and the meetings for the next live book club. Because we're going to have different schedules at different times. Um, we have some people in the UK. We have some people in Australia, people all over the world that want to participate in the book club. So they're going to start at different times. You can jump in wherever you set, wherever you're ready. If you wanted to, like with today, if you're starting with, with uh, chapter two, you just want to catch up and don't want to go to a live one and start over. That's, oh, that's okay too. Just watch a couple of videos in the back office. You can get caught up with the homework and um, just a little bit of uh, pre pre conversation in the beginning. Let me share my screen. Uh, share desktop. There we go. All right. Um, if you want a hard copy of the book, now you can go to the book club with the free version that's in your back office. You can download the, the PDF and you can get the dream planner and uh, print it off on your printer and do it that way. If you want a hard copy of the book, you go to dreamplanner.info and you just go to this page and buy both. We even include, um, we even include shipping on the next page and you actually get the full printed version starting at the month that you purchase it. In other words, you're going to get a six month planner, but if you start in February, March or April, we don't start you in January and you lose half your planner. We start in the month that you purchase your planner. So if you order in January, you get a January planner. If you order at the end of January, you get a February planner. So I hope that makes sense to you. You're never going to miss a month or lose uh, paperwork. So if this starts you at the end of the time, the other thing that you probably want to do is get involved in the group where the other planners and other and other uh, book club leaders are going to be holding their book clubs. You can ask questions that you may not get to answer. Ask some of those questions here, and it's at the Beehive. Beehive is spelled B-E for Bill Ebert. Beehive. B e h i v e. Beehive group under Facebook. Just ask to join. Everybody gets in for free. Um. And then lastly, in your back office, you ever get stuck with anything at all, you can't figure out how to get somewhere or there's any questions, just go ahead and submit a ticket. We get a team of people that are willing to help you out. So here's what we're going to do. Each session, we're going to start with, with talking about the next chapter. So this is chapter two. I'm going to talk about, you know, the writer's notes, some of the stuff that you may not get by reading the book. You know, why did I write chapter two, some of the story behind it. Some of, the, some of the nuances of, of the chapter, how to get the best out of it, maybe get the Q&A session, answer some of your questions, how, you can, how can I use this in my marriage, how can I use this with my kids, how can I use this at work, how can I use this stuff to get a raise, all that stuff. So we're going to talk about the chapter, and then the session ends, and you guys go into your live Q&A at your home. So if you have this book club, if you're actually having this book club in somebody's house and you're watching this front end of the video, I'm going to explain the chapter. It's going to be handed over to the leader. You guys are going to do the homework from last week, which was chapter one in this case. You're going to do the homework from last week, maybe ask some questions about the chapter for this week, and then that's the end of book club. Book club should probably last no more than 30 to 45 minutes because it's pretty simple stuff, um, but some of the questions may you know, lead into the 30, 40 minute range. So that's basically the overview. We're going to go through chapter two right now, and then at the end of it, for those of you who are live with me now, we'll stop the recording, but we'll open up for Q&A, and you guys can ask your questions, and we can do the live book club with us. Um, for those of you who are actually watching this as a recording in somebody's home or online with somebody else as a leader, you can just ask your, your questions then. So chapter two, uh, begin by dreaming. This is probably the core of the book. Chapter one was an introduction. The core of the book is chapter two, and I wanted to get this as your first skill set before you actually went anywhere else. And so chapter two is about brainstorming and it's a habit that you need to get into. It's one of the core things that successful people do is they write down their goals. The difference between the top 2% of the top 2%, there's only one difference between that group and it's what they do with their goals. The fact that they write them down and are clear and concise about exactly where they're going, exactly how they're going to get there. There's something about that one skill set that makes people successful far beyond their peers. And so I've taken, talked to Fortune 500 guys, I've read almost every book on the subject on this, on this issue. What is it about writing something down that causes someone to be successful? And so this gives you the beginning stages of dream casting, of writing your visions down to help you find and fulfill your divinity, your destiny. 
And what happens is until you write it down, there's a lot of things that you're not going to see until you write it. So you're going to see here, it's super, super simple. And that's the crazy thing about this one hack. This, this is one of the things that we call a life hack. The one thing about this is it's so simple that people forget to do it. It's one of those amazing things. It's as simple as putting your clothes on before you leave, leave work in the morning. The only difference is there's a tremendous amount of immediate pain for you for not putting your clothes on if you leave the house in the morning. In this case, you can go through life never writing down your goals and never feel the immediacy of the pain. But you are not accomplishing as much as you could be if you would just do this one thing. And I press and stress and repress over and over again whenever I'm coaching somebody for them to get something to get into the habit of success. And the number one habit that you can do is this one, writing down your goals, brainstorming, painting your life amazing, drawing it down. Every single personality type will benefit from this one skill. So we make it super simple. I'm not gonna go into the teaching that's in the book because it's super simple, just breaking it down into different categories. I do wanna talk about something that I don't talk about in the book. And there's this fourth category here called who am I? In addition to you writing down your personal goals and your aspirations, one of the things that people don't take much care about is their brand, is their essence. When they leave a room, what are people saying about you? You know they're talking about you because you talk about them when they leave the room. So it's important for you to write down who do you want to be when you leave the room. And I tell this in some of my stories, and, and it might even be one of the stories in this book, um, but one of, the, one of the, my personal desires was to leave the room and be the smart guy. You know, for years as a young person, I, people wouldn't listen to me. I didn't understand. Why would you listen to me? You know I'm a smart guy. And I always wanted to leave the room as the smart guy. Later, as I got older, I realized that that wasn't an important brand. When I left the room, that wasn't the most important brand. The most important brand was that people thought that I cared. I was the guy that cared. And so you get to fashion your brand, your story, your essence when you leave the room. And it's really important, in addition to you setting goals, you want to set the role relationships that you have with other people. You don't have to let other people, circumstance, and society determine your role relationships with everybody that you meet. Even if it's your boss, you do not have to let the culture determine your role relationship. You have more control over those things than you can possibly imagine. And so if you start setting that stuff in motion, the who am I section of this book, you can start defining how people see you and how they relate to you. So it's really important as you go through this, every time you do it, in the beginning, I suggest that a person does this one section every single week. Now, even though in the planner, as you get over here to the planner, you see that as you get to that section, it's only in there one time. It's the first few pages, but I suggest that you take the PDF version from your back office and print it out and carry it with you and do it once a week. Once you start seeing some similarity to your brainstorming and it's not changing months, then do it once a month and then do it once every six months. And for your family, I suggest that you do it at least once a year. Sit down with your spouse, your significant other, sit down and write down what you want to do as goals together. It's amazing how clarifying your goals will help you accomplish so much more. And so we have a habit in our household. We do it on our anniversary. We get away shut off all the noises, shut off all the sound. We go away somewhere and we write down, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be? Where do you want to be in five years? And it's a part of our culture in our household to do this every single year on our anniversary. This year, we're not only going to do it on our anniversary, we're going to do it on January 1st. When everyone else is thinking about New Year's resolutions, we're in the midst of transition. We're starting to do a lot of new stuff. We're going to sit down and clarify, where do we want to be in March? Where do we want to be in June? Where do we want to live? You know, do you want to live in Europe this year? Do you want to live in Colorado this year? Where do you want to go? We actually get to brand new, fresh and clean, decide what our year looks like. So do this as often as you can until you start seeing that it's the same thing. Once you start seeing, here's how often you do it. Do it until you realize that what I just did last week, it's the same thing this week. It hasn't changed much. Okay, you can skip a little bit of time. Put a month between the time that you do it. And then put six months between the time that you do it. And then... Six months to a year. Do it on a regular basis. Refine and define your goals as you move along because a lot of times you don't see the forest for the trees. You don't see a lot of the stuff that crept in that you're, just, you're spending a lot of time wasting. Um, the two very important chapters that this thing talks about is two very important principles. So I gave you a skill set, which was the uh, refining and defining your life by using goals. 
by brainstorming, by setting your, your vision to, to, uh, to a path. The two other things are the mindsets that will help you achieve more. How, how, how is it that some people read um, a thousand pages a week? Other people learn 14 languages. How is it that with the same 24 hours, some people are massively successful and massively influential while other people just go through mediocrity. They just go through their life, just barely making it by. They don't have any tremendous friends. They don't have tremendous influence. They don't have, they, they just make it by. Um, if that's your goal in life, then great. You've reached your goal. That's great. You're, this is probably not a book for you. But if you want to start achieving things, if you want to start seeing greatness in your life, there's two mindsets that you need in addition to that skill set. One is to remove dis, disease, being dissuaded, being distracted, being discouraged. And we talk about that in this mindset number one is to remove dis from your life. And the second thing is what I call the push. One of the things that we have in our culture, especially in America, and it's not just America, you can find it in the UK, you can find it over in India, you can find it in some other major, major countries and continents, is the culture has, has dissuaded people from pushing, from encouraging other people to change. In our culture, it's like, don't judge me, dude. I mean, you know, don't, don't, don't in, inspire me or encourage me to become a better person because that's like judgment and that like hurts my feelings. So like, don't do that. And so our culture is actually bred into it a thing not to push, not to push other people, not to push ourselves, not to strive for mastery, strive for excellence. There are certain arenas where we're still allowed to do it. I suggest that we should start learning to push that we should start being the change to that culture in our workplace, in our relationships, in our family, with our friends. Don't just let the conversation go. Steer it to greatness. Steer it to excellence. And so those two mindsets right there will help you achieve more than almost anybody else you know. Writing down your goals, removing distraction, and pushing. I'm not saying being antagonistic. I'm not saying being a pain, not be, oh, no, here comes that guy again. I'm not talking about that kind of pushy you know, New Jersey obnoxious. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about the kind of person that is continually provoking people to greatness, push, change. So those two things, those two mindsets, and that one skill set will absolutely dramatically change your life. Next week, we're going to talk about um, refining and defining. What do you do when you get your brainstorming and it's not crystal clear? How do I define it? How do I refine it? How do I start taking action? How do I go from an idea to a dream? How do I go from wanting to fly to jumping off the cliff? What's the step? And so I want to talk to you about that next week. As far as that, this is the end of that, this class. I wanted to uh, encourage you guys to read the whole book. If you haven't, like I said, if you haven't bought a copy and you want to, dreamplanner.info, get yourself a copy. Um, if you want to, just download the free version in the back if you're a PDF guy. And then um, now I'm just going to stop the video. And for those of you who want to do live Q&A, we'll do that for um, everybody else. Go ahead and uh, do your homework from last week. Talk to your talk to your uh, coach or counselor or leader, and then um, I'll see you next week. Once a week, ten chapters, one after another. See you next Monday. All right, everybody. Um, I'm going to open up the call for you guys because I'm going to stop the conversation right there for everybody else. And if I can figure out how to do that, there we go. And then unmute everybody. And then unmute yourself if you have a question. So that's the, um, that's today's training. Some of you missed Monday. I mean, missed last Monday. So you hey, might Bell, not. I think you're still recording. I probably am, but that's okay. That's just for you guys. Okay. All right. But I'll chop it off. I'll chop it off at this point. We'll keep the Q&A for you guys for later and for um, some of you leaders who want to see how Q&A works. So anybody got any questions? Did you guys do your homework from last week? Raise your hand or unmute yourself if you want. On the push, Bill. Yeah. When they push back because of how culture has brainwashed and, and integrated their lives, 
how do we softly start pushing them? Well, being a father of uh, four children who and survived teenage years, um, <laughs> we know that push and provoking is a regular habit. <laughs> you don't make it through the day if you ain't pushing. Um, the thing is to maintain a relationship while you push. Mm -hmm. And so in the coaching relationship, you first start off with asking them what they want to do. So you never push them to do something that is not within their dream. They've discussed the dream with you. So now you're co-habit. You're co-laboring with them in a dream. And so what you do in the push is you ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be? So the push is the question. There's the first part of the push. Once they have, once you have that, now you have a place to push that is based on their dream and they don't mind being pushed. I mean, if, if I say I want to lose a hundred pounds and you say, I know how to do that, I can help you. And I don't agree to that. Then I just feel like you're calling me fat. Right. But the moment I say, look, I got a hundred pounds to lose. And you say, Hey, I want to help you with that. You mind if I call you tomorrow? Now you start talking to me about being overweight tomorrow. It's a different relationship. If you immediately jump in and say, Hey, I want to help you lose a hundred pounds. <laughs> you pushed, you pushed too hard. You went outside that first step. So the first step is to define their dreams, agree that they want help and then push them beyond what they would have done without you. So they say, Hey, I want to lose a hundred pounds and I want to do it in a year. So I can show you how to do it in 90 days, push them to do it now and do it faster. So we provoke them with their dreams and then it becomes fun. That makes sense. Thank you. Anybody else? I just want to thank BJ for asking a good question. Thanks, sir. <laughs> that was a good question. Uh, she beat me to it. It was a really good question. <laughs> hey, Bill, you mentioned that the homework for last week. What was that, reading chapter one? Read chapter one. Um, start your, start your uh, material. You know, go through and start with your, with your brainstorming section. Right. And... Um, I think um, come back with any questions because there was a list of six things that make a person happy. Certainty, uncertainty, significance, connection, growth, and contribution. And, um, right. you know, that's the thing. Raise any questions that you have to do there. Okay, thank you. Sure thing. So any of you guys that want to start your own book club, um, you can start off by sending them video number one, which is, which is not chapter one, it's video number one. Start getting four or five people together and start leading the book club. And all you do is you take the, part, the first half of our video, show it to them, and then open, them up, open up for Q&A. It's super simple because it's very tight. You know, we did 15 minutes, I mean, 13 minutes from beginning to end of the whole discussion. So a 13-minute video for someone to change their life and then open up for Q&A. That's the nice thing about this is the chapters are so short and the information is so foundational that to just get people on the road, it's kind of like, it's kind of like dieting, dieting and losing weight is the easiest thing in the world to do. There's only two things, reduce your calories, increase your output. I mean, it's just, it's not that hard, but we just need to get them to do it the same way with this stuff. Um, 10 simple chapters, getting them engaged and getting them participating in a community is the key to building your brand, building your story, building your sphere of influence. And almost anybody can get four people start a little book club or seven are you saying to do that in person and meet meet somewhere in someone's house or rotate houses or something like that well i would i mean you know i live up in the mountains so it'd be it's really hard for me to do it but if i lived back in charlotte where i lived just uh, four years ago i would do a bookstore or a coffee shop i would say hey guys let's go to the coffee shop I'll bring copies of the book if you want to buy them, or I'll give you a way to, way to purchase them. Print out chapter one for them so they all have little handouts to work with and invite four or five people and do chapter one together. You know, it's, it's very likely that um, I'm saying if you get five to seven people, you're probably going to get most of them to want to come back to book club number two. Because if they showed up in the first place, that shows a little bit of incentive that they want to change their life. And because this stuff is so simple and you got community and there's not much of that going on in most people's lives, you probably get 90% of them to keep coming. And video one is the one that came with the planner, the original one that came with the planner. Video one is book club introduction. It's on my YouTube page. It's also going to be in your back office next week. 
there's a brand new section in the back office that's called tools and you can yes. see that it has uh, blogging for fun and profit and it has the uh, a bunch of different videos we're going to have the book club back there and we're going to have some uh, introduction pages to the book club right now everybody who joins the book club gets an email for every book club that goes out so if you guys start a new one every person in the back office will get an introduction to the new book club so in case they have somebody that needs to get caught up on lesson one or session one, they're going to come to yours. So then if we do that, we should let you know that we're doing it. Yes. If you want strangers at your book club, if you want to keep it super private and you're not, it's not an online thing, then don't tell me because I'll tell everybody. Okay. Uh, Gil Lopez. Si, senor. You have your hand raised. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, well, my question is not as specific to the book club, but uh, I've been having a couple of conversations and when I ask them, what do you want to do when you grow up? And they answer me and I tell them, well, I want to help you. They don't reply back. So I don't know if, uh, if I'm missing something there or... It's just the nature of some people will not just respond, whatever. Yeah, you're probably going to get, I would say, I would say I get less than 50% if I just say I want to help you with that. Now, you know, if I do it online, for example, if I'm doing it on Facebook and I do a questionnaire and I say, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or what are your goals for 2012? Or, and I see somebody says, I want to write a book. I want to tell a story. I want to make a million dollars. I say, I want to help you with that their response sometimes is just to hit the like button. They don't actually come back and have a conversation with me. If they hit a like button, now it's on. I mean, I'm, we're talking. I'm going to track them down, find them. I'm going to say, okay, I saw that you liked it. I want to help you and give them some specifics. This is how I can help you. Make an offer to them. It's basically, you know, you're actually closing the deal at that point. The moment they uh, do any kind of feedback at all after you say, yes, they hit the like button or, because they really don't know what to say if you say, I want to help you with that. You have to follow, you have to follow up with them after that. And give them some specifics on how you want to help. Say, look, I'm working with a guy. He wrote a best-selling book. We have a community of people that are helping each other find and fulfill their dreams. How would you like to join? Cost you nothing. The guy can't say no. He just said he wants to make a million dollars. Okay. So um, the book club is really a tool for you guys to build the first layer of influence with people. Start getting people relating to you on the idea that you're a coach, getting them relating to you as to you're going to help guide and direct them into their own dreams. And the book club is probably the least confrontational way because it starts off free. It's all, I mean, it's just give, give, give. That's all we do. And we don't even, we don't even tell them they have to buy the book. They can, you know, download the back office version for free. So it's a total giving relationship that I want to help you find and fulfill your dreams. And then it's that first bridge. It bridges a relationship that changes the role relationship from them just being a normal guy on Facebook to you being their guide, you being their coach. And as we get farther along and we start talking to you guys about leading, you know what it is to lead your own group. I'll show you how to take the, that small influence and turn it into, you know, four people turns into 20 people turns into a hundred people and start engaging those who are ready at the next level. So once they hit like and you talk to them again and they say, okay, do we enter them in the book club chapter page then? Yes. I would enter them into the book club and say, I just entered you. You're going to be getting a daily email with the book and I'd love for you to join me in my book club. And you know, now you have them in your back office. If you have your blog and you put, them in your, you put them in your email list, they start getting trickles not only from us but from you. Just continue to follow up with them. I want to uh, let everybody know and invite anybody who wants to join. My first book club is this coming Saturday, the 31st at 10 a.m. Central. And I will post the Zoom link in both the Beehive and the Top 100. I have seven people and I can I know Bill suggests we keep it small but I can host up to 50 so let me know just join us if you would like 10 a.m. central 
Yeah, and I suggest if you guys are going to want to start your own book club, get into as many number one book clubs as you can and watch other people do it and see how easy it is from different personality types. All right, no more questions. Tanya, good to see you. I hope it's uh, you're not snowed in up there. Normally, right about now, you got about four and a half feet of snow. I think you're muted. Tanya is now unmuted. Yes, Bill, we went skiing yesterday. Had a great time. No, Christmas Eve, had a great time. And we've got plenty of snow. Come on up and see us. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it scares me up there. You go, to, <laughs> go that far west of Denver um, this time of year. I mean, you could be – we were up there We were up there this time in 1982 in December. We got so much snow, we were stuck for, I think it was 17 days before, the, before we ever got snowed out. We ate potatoes <laughs> for 17 days. We had potatoes and baked potatoes and mashed potatoes. We didn't have anything but potatoes. It was like, it was like six feet of snow. No. Was, I live in town. We could walk to the grocery store. It was crazy. It was just crazy. So that's, it scares me to go up that far. He lives up on a ski resort like Granby, Empire, Vale, that side of the country. So, yes. you know, that's, that's, some, that's some mountainous scariness right there. That's Jeremiah uh, and stuff. No, it was beautiful. We skied with Santa on Christmas Eve. We had a great time, and there were snow flurries all day today. It was a white Christmas. That's, that's Jeremiah Johnson stuff right there. <laughs> no, it was good. Well, good to see you all. I like the book club idea, and I have some, some good news. I'm getting paid to blog for some other people, and I had a little chapter in a book that um, called Mom Village is out that I need to post in our group. And so things are moving along. My computer did die. So I'm trying to figure out what the next best option is. And the Chrome is working for the moment. So I figure out what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'd love to see. Link us to your blog that you're getting paid for. I'd love to see that. Sure. I'd be happy to. All right, everybody. Thanks for showing up. I'll uh, post this in your back office and ask any questions on Beehive. See you. Okay. Bye.